So I'm lucky enough to have two workshops. It's greedy, I know. But that does mean that I have to transfer my consumables from one to the other. And this is my current transport. Problem with this, it requires two hands and it falls apart. Time to change. Hi there, welcome back to existing viewers, and if you're new, welcome. I really hope to earn your subscription today. I used some walnut to uh, match my existing tool chest, uh, machined it up, and uh, started to get all the pieces into their final dimensions. The ends of the tote needed to uh, be made out of three separate pieces. I decided I'd biscuit them together uh, just to reduce any movement during glue up. Then it's the carpenter's triangle to make sure I don't lose orientation uh, during glue up. And that was followed by the labeling and marking out properly of all the other pieces. I had uh, veneered these bottom panels previously uh, in my usual way. Each edge of these three boards that are joining need to be uh, jointed properly and coming from a machine, they'll always have a rippled finish, so they need to be planed properly. You'll see I like to use the book fold method here. Um, not one likes that, but it works for me. I needed to make sure that when I uh, cut these end panels to their final size, um, that the biscuit placement isn't going to then reveal the biscuits. Uh, so I made a small paper template and used that to help me mark out the locations that I was going to biscuit. Now I'm making this as a tote to move my consumables around. However, totes have multiple uses. Could be an artist tote, could even be a beer tote. So uh, why not let me know in the comments what you think you'd use it for. As you already know, I love putting dovetails in projects, so this is no different, and I love marking them out this way. pay particular attention to your marking out here, transferring those dovetail profiles over to the uh, the pins. Using the sharp marking knife like this works the best, well, for me anyway. centre divider is going to be through wedged mortise and tenons into the ends of the tote. Uh, so here I'm just marking out the shoulder lines. So I then use my table saw to remove the bulk of material. I then use my chisel to clean up the shoulders properly.
Then I'm putting in a, uh, a round mortise for the handle. And then it's just a case of uh, widening the outside of the mortises for the wedges. This process never gets old. <laughs> so satisfying. I think it was a bit warm when I was doing this. It was around 36 degrees, which is, you know, it's unusual for us here in the UK. Um, you can see how quick it was drying on those pieces. I am the nerd about the, about the handle for a while, and I was thinking of using some curly maple, but I didn't actually have any left. So I decided just to um, laminate a few pieces together and then stick them on the lathe. I really enjoy finding an excuse to use the lathe. glue up on this wasn't too bad actually because I could put the center divider in and the handle put the other end on and then just slot the uh, dovetail sides into place in theory to use another piece of maple to push these in further. Um, I think I've got my measurements a bit wrong. We'll see how wide they are. <laughs> Oops. Just using the block plane here to take the um, mortise and tenon down to flush with the end. And do the same with the uh, dovetails. And there we have it, one overly engineered tote to uh, help me transport all my consuming balls. If you've uh, made it to the end of this video, thank you very much. Don't forget to tell me in the comments what you think you'd use this tote for. If you like what you've seen, it'd really help the channel if you were to hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. And of course, I really hope I've earned your subscription. See you next time.